I am Krichi Krichi, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made the dress for my Liana Stark cosplay. First of all, major spoiler alert. <laughs> if you're not caught up with season seven of Game of Thrones, well, you probably wouldn't have clicked on this video, but be warned, this is major, 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 major stuff. And it's coming up in three, two, one. Of course, I'm referring to this scene. <sighs> Leon and Rhaegar got married. So when this episode first aired, the dragon and the wolf, I was like, they're gonna show us Liana and Rhaegar. They're gonna show us Liana and Rhaegar. They're gonna show us Liana and Rhaegar. And everyone's like, no, the dragon and the wolf is like Daenerys and Jon. And I was like, <sighs> and I was right. Oh my God. When that vision happened, I was bawling. I couldn't handle it. I was like crying, like bawling on the couch. And I was like, no, oh, holding the pillow. And I was like, oh my God. So, <sighs> yeah, I was excited. And the next day, I went out and bought fabric and made this dress. <laughs> this costume overall took 44 hours. I use an app called Cost Planner where you can track all of your cosplay progress. If you're like OCD like me, you can like time yourself, which I do. You can log in all your different costumes and then for each costume, you can log in whatever you're buying or whatever you're making and you can log in however much money you spent for it or however much time it took to make it and then you can also insert reference pictures it's a really useful app the dress took me 25 hours yes this costume was on screen for literally 20 seconds remember if i can do it you can do it. And now, let's see what I made. For Lady Liana, I chose this pattern because I wanted to achieve a slouchy waist. I cut one side of the skirt and pinned it on my mannequin and also did a little dance because I wanted to adjust the back side of the skirt and add a little train. I measured however long I wanted the train to be and then I made an additional piece for my pattern on that big white sheet with squares on it that's called Pelin. I made sure that I marked where the two pieces needed to meet so that I could put them back together later. Once I was done with that, I checked it on my mannequin to see if I liked the length of it, and I did! I liked it! So I cut the back of the skirt out of my lining fabric as well. Now for the top part of the dress. I wanted my dress to be even slouchier than the one in the pattern, so I had to make my top longer. To achieve that, I cut a gap in my pattern, and I filled that gap with, you guessed it, more pallin, so that the pattern could become longer. Most patterns have a line that says cut here to make longer or something like that, which is what I did. Otherwise, you can just add some extra pattern to the end of the piece. I also made the neckline a little bit rounder because I thought it would match better the one that I saw in the reference pictures. When I cut the pattern for my two top pieces on the lining fabric, I made sure to line the top of the pattern flush with the edge of the fabric and leave 5 eighths of an inch of extra fabric at the bottom to give the pieces extra flow. Then it was time to open the mofo, the pleated chiffon that I bought in downtown Los Angeles that came like this, sandwiched in paper, <laughs> and it's awesome. It was a great fabric, uh, except it was white, and I needed light blue. So yeah, I cut all of my pieces, two for my skirt and two for my top in the chiffon as well, and every time I would line a new piece, I had to make sure that the pleats were directed in the same direction so that when the dress was all put together the fabric would be facing the same way then it was time for the glorious joy of dyeing fabric i made sure to wet all my pieces first by soaking them in a bowl of hot water then it was time to bring out the big guns i used red dye more for synthetics in kentucky sky and it just poured it in there poured it like it's hot then I mixed it real well and tested it on a piece of paper towel. I just put the towel in the bath and kept it there for a little bit. Then I checked it occasionally and when I saw that the color was close to the one that I wanted, it was time to test on actual fabric. 
I used a scrap of fabric first, of course, and kept it in there for about half an hour. And when I saw that the color was a match with Liana's, it was time to go to town. I smushed all my pieces in there and tossed them around until there were no bubbles underneath them and they were all soaked in the water. Then it was time to cut all my pieces again on my mid-layer fabric. This is a golden mesh fabric that I decided to put in between my lining and my chiffon. Originally, I thought the fabric was bold enough to be seen from under the chiffon, but it wasn't. So I decided to embellish it further and make it more three-dimensional by adding some golden trim to it. I looked at tons and tons and tons of reference pictures to figure out a pattern that would mimic as close as possible the way that the golden flakes are laid out in the original design. Then I went to Joann's and I bought a shit ton of trim. 50 yards to be precise. I went for an intricate helix design for the top, whereas for the skirt I opted for more of an S-shaped pattern. And by the way, this is the actual sun setting as I'm doing this because it took forever. So far I've only pinned the trim to the mesh and now it's time to take it to the machine. I'm doing a straight stitch all across the length of the trim and as I'm going a bunch of the pins are falling off due to the vibrations. You just saw a little piece pop up and then the rest is moving around and changing the ratio between them and no 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 we want them to match. So basically after each time that I would saw one of the pieces in the machine I would have to adjust the pins to the next piece again. And then keep going like that. So one, repin the next one in place, saw that, and etc. After that was done, it was time to put the chiffon together with the mid layer mesh, and I started with the top part. I pinned the two layers together all around one side of the top and then I cut off the excess chiffon. This pleated fabric has a tendency to fluctuate in width so I had to adjust it to the mesh shape by cutting all of the excess all around. And then I put it through the machine and I sawed it all around making sure that the pleats would all face the same direction and not get caught up in the thread and the needle and it was hard but I did it. And thus I had to repeat the same step for the other side of the top of the dress and then the same thing for the two sides of the skirt, obviously. I pinned the two fabrics together all around, cut the excess chiffon to measure, and then sewed the two pieces together to make it one. It took a little bit of playing around with that chiffon to make it cooperate and stick where I wanted it to stick, but finally I was able to put all this through the machine. Once I had created the four main pieces of the dress by joining mesh and chiffon, it was time to put the two sides of the top together and the two sides of the skirt together. I pinned and sewed the sides of the pieces together from the inside and turned them around to check for width. Both top and skirt were a bit too big. I went a little bit overboard with trying to make the dress super slouchy bohemian and cut two big pieces of fabric. So I sewed the same seam again a little further in with a bigger seam allowance and then cut off all the excess. I also secured the edges from fraying with a little zigzag stitch. Once the pieces were the correct size, it was time to attach them to the lining. Before that though, I had to put all the lining parts together as well. I basically did the same thing I just did to the chiffon mesh combo and attached the two top pieces and the two skirt pieces at the sides. Basically now I had two separate tops, one made of lining, one made of chiffon and mesh combo, and two skirts, one made of lining and one made of chiffon mesh combo. Phew! When assembling the top part, I have lining and chiffon facing right sides together. As you can see, the gold mesh is turned away from me, and the seam of the lining is turned towards me. I pinned these pieces together all around the armholes and necklines, and cut some excess fabric that didn't quite match the shape. I sawed all these seams making sure I would keep the pleats as neat as possible. I then trimmed the seam and notched all curves. Very, very important. I turned it inside out using the shoulder seams I had left open and so now I have six, I repeat, six layers of fabric total. I checked if the lining seam came out right and yay! Now time to close the shoulder seam. 
I just pin them on the wrong side of the garment and sewed. Yes! Top is done! Now I went through the exact same process for the skirt. I attached the front and back chiffon mesh combo at the sides, being very careful that the pleats were laying flat and neat. These pleats are the bane of my existence. I then cut off excess seam fabric, and remember I'm making the garment a bit smaller than what I originally foresaw when cutting the fabric, cause I'm a lousy seer, okay? At this point, I slipped the lining skirt inside the chiffon skirt with wrong sides together and sewed them at the waist. Now I know I said I was done with the top, but I lied. The damn pleats, kids! I had to secure them in place at the bottom of the top so that it was easier to attach it to the skirt. And thus I did just that. Getting rid of excess fabric resulting from sad pattern making on my part. Hey, I do my best. Now cue the drama! I realized the dress was a much lighter shade of blue than the original swatch, which I had saved and was just hanging in the living room, you know, begging to be noticed. But here's what kills me. I checked, I checked many times that the color of the pieces matched the test swatch, and yet there I was. I grabbed the finished top and the finished skirt, got them wet, and tossed them in a second dye bath with the same dye. Except this time, I got the right shade of blue. Now once the dyeing achievement was unlocked, it was time for the final step. Assembling the dress. I first attached top and skirt right sides together, and this time I hand basted the ish so that I could try the dress on and also because for other seams, having a basting stitch in there as opposed to pins helps me. Don't judge. After that, I sawed the resulting seam allowance as close to the edge as I could to form a casing for some handy dandy elastic. I pushed a 1 4th inch elastic through the mofo via a little opening I left when sewing the casing with a safety pin. Gave me carpal tunnel and various nightmares, but it did finally go in. I zigzagged the two ends together and voila! The dress had magically happened. And here's what the dress looks like on. Hit that thumb up if you've liked this video. I'm going to be showing you how I made her necklace next, so subscribe to my channel for more obscure cosplays that no one really recognizes. Happy cosplay!